Hey, what's up everyone? Hope everyone is doing well. In this video, I'm gonna talk about my journey with two time stretch anamorphic lenses and which one I decided to keep. So let's get into it. When I was looking at buying my first anamorphic lens, I found it very hard to find the right information about these lenses. A lot of videos were fake or about shooting anamorphic in general, which made it hard making the right decision. And with these lenses, it's impossible to just walk into a camera store to try them out. Of course, I could spend 2000 bucks and get the Holy Grail Koa BNH or 16H, but that's way too expensive. So I started looking on eBay on a daily basis and throughout the last year I bought the following lenses. The Sankor or Aki 16F, the Sankor 16D and the Koa Prominar 16S. In this video I will tell you which one I kept and why I sold the other two. And to make sure I won't disappoint some of you, this video is more about the usability of the lens and less about sample footage or actual specs of the different lenses. Anyways, let's dive right into it. Okay, let's start with the biggest lens, the Sankor 16D. This is a beautiful piece of glass that can produce beautiful images, but it's huge and heavy as well. It's over 500 grams and because of its weight, this one doesn't really work for run and gun shooters. Especially if it comes a long train of different lenses, like a taking lens, clamps and fillers, this is way too heavy for your camera body. If this is the way you're going, you should really invest in lens support and be aware that your rig is going to be very heavy. Even though the rear tread size and piece of gloss are much larger than my other anamorphic lenses, I didn't really notice any differences in how the image would turn out. I didn't use any lenses that were wider than the 58mm Helios lens I used, but I'm sure the level of vignetting will be different between these different anamorphic lenses. Also note that you can't put any ND filters on it by default. You're gonna have to take the front ring off, and believe me, this can be very difficult, but once you've managed to get it off, you can fit the front filter ring from Fit Atlantic on there. This is a very solid solution and makes it possible to put 72mm filters on your anamorphic lens. Or of course something like a single focus solution. Next up is the Sankor 16F. I already made a video about this earlier. I really like this lens and with its 53mm thread on the front it's easy to put a front filter on there without any extra accessories. The rear element is 43 millimeters, so you can use it with a red stand or fit Atlantic clamp. The focusing was pretty smooth on this one, but the only downside was that the distance is shown in feet instead of meters. So this makes it hard to double focus with lenses that show the distance in meters only. Of course, with a single focus solution, this really isn't a problem. For me, the Koa 16S is the real winner. It's small, super lightweight, the focus ring is very smooth and it produces nice images. The distance is set to meters and with a clamp from RevCam it's possible to put filters on top of it. I currently use it with the Helios 44 as a taking lens and the SLR Magic Range Finder, turning the setup into a single focus solution. For more close-up shots, I use the SLR Magic Achromatic Diopter 1.8 times. This diopter also creates a beautiful blue flare. Oh, and to connect the taking lens to the anamorphic lens, I use the Red Stand Custom Clamp for Compact Anamorphics. This one is very well built and has a great fit. This one also works with the Sankor 16F I just talked about. In my opinion, it works a lot better than the anamorphic clamp kit from Vid Atlantic. All in all, this makes it a very small and compact anamorphic setup that works great for my run and gun style of shooting. To wrap it up, I personally haven't noticed huge differences between these lenses when it comes to the images. Beforehand, I was expecting some to be really a lot better than others, but I can't really say that was the case. I'm sure the real experts like Anamorphic on a budget who really tested these side by side can say a lot more about it. But to be honest, I find having fun with these lenses to be much more important 
than a little difference in image quality. All right, that's pretty much it for this video. Again, my apologies for not having a lot of side-by-side -side comparison footage uh, so you can make the right decision when it comes to image quality. But I hope sharing my journey of finding the right anamorphic for my shooting style also helps you finding your perfect lens setup. Good luck and if you have any questions, please drop a comment down below and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.